Okay, so uh, let's move to the second section. So, um, so now we know how to like really clean up the data. Then we can see like what those data can tell us. Uh, so, of course, in the last slide, I just show you a huge like heat map. Right? However, it's so difficult to see. So that's why sometimes like people like just rotate this heat map and then show this like triangle uh, heat map. So, um, but the idea is the same. Like uh, each dot here indicates how many interactions we observe for the two corresponding locations. Like because it's rotated, so you can see like this dot showing the interaction between this location and this location. So yeah, they are just like rotated. Uh, so uh, after uh, like people do like this experiment, uh, as I said, like one important factor, one important uh, thing that you can ch uh, can change like your con conclusion is the resolution. Like what's the resolution you see these interactions? So for example, in the very low resolution, it's really like the enhancer promoter interaction. So if we want to study the promoter interaction, uh, promoter enhancer interactions, then we're really like using this like four kilobits resolution because on average, like usually the gene has like several thousand base pairs. So then only at this resolution, we can see the interaction from the enhancer to the promoter. Then at uh, this resolution, we can see many like dots like here. And each of the dots indicating that there are lots of interactions between the one location and the other location. So it's some, in many cases, it's the interaction between the enhancer and the promoter. Uh, if we, yeah. Um, what are the <coughs> algorithms are these um, interactions between the enhancer and the scan? Yeah. So, so here you can see it's just only show a small region, right? So you, you can see it's on Compton 2, and the starting location is uh, 75 uh, million base pair. Yeah, and the end the, uh, the location is like 70, uh, 71, like 0.87 million base pair. So I think in total, like uh, it's like a 0.4 million bases yeah, in the whole region. So of course, we cannot draw the whole thing, right? It's so we don't have enough space. But uh, we can just like, focus on each of them. Then we can see these like, interactions. So uh, if we want to see the whole thing and want to draw the whole thing to the, like, the, to the slides, then we need to lower the resolution. So that's why people also draw this heat map at the 10 kilobits resolution. Yeah. Now you can see the starting post, uh, location is from like, uh, 65 to 73. Now you can see in total it's roughly like 10 megabytes, right? So it's the larger region. Uh, and very surprisingly, you can see if you change your location, actually you can see very different things. Right? So on the very low resolution, you can see like those dots indicating the interactions between the two regions. However, if you lower the resolution, now you become like many triangles. Right? It's a lot of dots, it's many triangles. So wh why it look like that? So just to recall that uh, those heat map showing like how many interactions for the two corresponding regions. Right? So if we saw a triangle, somehow it's saying that there are lots of interactions for the regions with the same like triangle. Like, 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 like for, for this big one, you can see there are lots, uh, for, for any region that within the triangle, they have lots of interactions with each, with each other. Well, for the other uh, for for the other triangle is like a different domain, right? So that's why people define it as a domain because really for the for the for the DNA is in the same domain they interact with each other very rapidly. Well, for the other uh, for the region outside the domain they don't interact. So uh, if we like map it to the structure, then the structure probably like this. So you can see in the same domain the DNA just walking around and breathing. Well. For the other, like it's a very separated region, so it's a domain. Uh, so uh, still, like even though we're using like this ten kilobit resolution, we cannot uh, still we cannot see the whole chromosome, right? We cannot see the whole strand. Then that's why uh, people also like further reduce the resolution. So I think uh, this cover a little bit. Yeah, I think now now like if we further reduce the resolution. Uh, the heat map will look like this. 
the law you can see it, it become different. It's now we, we don't see, uh, we not only see the triangle. So of course we see some triangle here, right? But still, like, you think that those triangle expand to other regions that are far away on the chromosome. So that's why it looks like a very different pattern beyond this like, domain region. And that's why like, people define it as a region. So I will, I will illustrate more like in the next slide. Uh, so that's why like, uh, depending on what's the resolution, we see the heat map, actually we can see different patterns. And that's why we study the structure at different resolution. So as I mentioned, on the highest, uh, like uh, on the very low resolution, if we just uh, like see the whole heat map for one chromosome, then the pattern looks like this. So you can see it's like a grid. It's not a triangle, it's like a grid. So uh, when we saw this grid, you can immediately imagine that actually there are two regions, right? So, so one is those like red region, the other is uh, dark blue region. So uh, after people like uh, define those like uh, uh, two like uh, regions, uh, we can also like uh, see how it correlates with something we know. For example, how it correlates with the gene with the genes on this chromosome. Right. So, so here each bar indicating like how many genes for each location, and also like a, how it correlates with the like those hazel modifications. Right. So, and also like a, those DNS uh, DNS activities. So, uh, for either those gene and uh, those hazel modification and those DNS, somehow they indicate in the open and the close of the DNA, uh, especially for the DNS because uh, as we like I mentioned before, for the for the whole DNA region, some some region they are like a close, they are accessible to to proteins outside. Some region they are open, then they can be read and transcribed by other other proteins. So uh, the experiment to measure those differences is using this like DNS. It's a, a protein that can cut the DNA. If it can cut, then of course it's like an open region. So. So that's why after uh, after people define this like uh, uh, domain, uh, uh, this this like a region, open and closed regions, uh, uh, people using uh, a technique called the uh, eigenvalue decomposition. So the eigenfactor is really like if I if I want using a one dimension, like using a one factor to approximate the pattern in the whole matrix, then what's the best best uh, approximation we can have, right? So the best approximation actually is, is like eigenfactor. So, so that's why after we get this eigenfactor, you can see like now we can see a one-to-one -one correspondence. Like if the eigenvalue is high, then it's corresponding to this like red region. Uh, if it's low, then it's like the other region. So, uh, so just by looking at this like uh, uh, heat map, uh, you can see that this like open and close uh, the region is really a global pattern. We can only see this pattern when we work on the when we work on the heat map that across the whole chromosome. Right? So when we zoom in, somehow we cannot see it, but we when we like really like low the resolution, we can see this pattern. And off and also like this open and closed list is defined uh, based on like our understanding on the genes uh, genome structure. Like we know that like those. Uh, the region that have a lot of genes usually is open, right? It's like a lot of functional units. Yeah. So the, the eigenvector values are broken, but that's, that can be derived simply from the IC. Yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a, just a, uh, using uh, mathematical computation. Using, I think it's quite standard to do the eigenvalue decomposition using for any like, data matrix. So after you do the decomposition, then you have to like, so what's showing here is the first like eigenfactor. There are also like other factors, but it's not the dominant. The first one is the dominant pattern. So that's why uh, if we're using like one factor to approximate the matrix, then the first eigenfactor is the best choice. Yeah, and that's why uh, it's showing here. Uh, and uh, uh, after this like uh, high seek experiment uh, are widely adopted, uh, people like uh, can do this experiment in different cell in different cell lines, and uh, um, and uh, surprisingly that 
uh, if you have put the heatmap from two DM cell line and then do eigenvalue value decomposition, you can actually find that they are different. They are not the same. So meaning that this like open and close really depending on something beyond the, the DNA, right? something like uh, epigenomic uh, like, uh, changes. And go back, if we like uh, know, uh, like using a higher resolution to see, then we have those domain regions, right? As I mentioned, so this is called a topological associating domain, tag domain. So uh, the, 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 the reason uh, people call it a domain is uh, just uh, as we show here, like at this resolution, people often see many triangles, right? And those triangles indicate that there are lots of interactions for the regions in the same region, well, very few for the two regions if there are uh, two different domains. Um, so different from those like open and close, actually this domain reading is very conserved across the cell types. Yeah. So, and more surprisingly, actually this domain reading is even conserved across the species. As the example showing here, like two uh, umbrella cell lines, one is from the mouse, one is from human. So usually if we're just looking at the uh, mouse genome and the human genome, uh, in many regions, they are not exactly the same, but they are similar. They look similar to each other. So that's why if we pick two regions on the DNA level, they are similar. Of course, they are not identical. They are similar. Then after performing the high C experiment, which after we check the domain, we can see that they resemble the very similar domain structure, indicating that this domain may be are determined really by the DNA itself rather than those epigenomic patterns. So, so I will um, like discuss more about the boundary of this in the later slides. Uh, but here you can already see that like at the, those open and close is not conserved among cell types, but this domain is actually conserved across these cell types, across different cell types. Uh, and uh, also like after people found those domains, uh, so uh, people try to like understand uh, how important this domain. So that's why uh, you can see here, it shows an example, like how the changes of the domain can cause different disease, different type of disease. So you can see like in, in this region, on Comdon, uh, there are four very important genes. So people know that those four genes are related to the limbo development. So, so in, in, the, in the normal, like uh, in the healthy people, uh, it functions like, there are, there are three like a domain regions. However, in some like disease the patient, you can see they have different changes. For example, in, in, the, in the panel B, you can see if there is a deletion, like in this region, you can see this deletion will totally like change the boundary of the second domain and the third domain, right? Because like this chunk of DNA is just uh, deleted. The consequence of this deletion, you can see, it will, will like change the like the real, like the fingers uh, in those patients. Um, also, like uh, a lot of type of changes is like for the boundary of the first domain and the second domain, there can be like an inversion or the duplication happening. And also, if there are like inversion or duplication, it can also like change the boundary of two uh, domain regions and then cause different disease. Yeah. So, so of course, uh, how the changes on the domain like really have different consequences, it's a complex process. But as, as low, uh, at least like here we can see that um, in many cases, uh, those domain regions are very important because if we change it, it can like, have different consequences. Uh, if this domain region are very important, then uh, how we can really like uh, define the domain region based on the heat map we got from the high C experiment, right? So, so of course, if we just saw the heat map, uh, we can see those like triangles on the on diagonal. Uh, but uh, how we can like map those triangles to a uh, well-defined domain region? Uh, is something like a lot that obvious. Now then we, here we can use the technique that we learned from like brief uh, lectures, uh, a technique called the hidden Markov model. 
So why hidden mark model can help this? So actually it's very large. It's, we can imagine that the domain is something like a, it's a very clear pattern, right? So, so it's either in the, in the domain or outside domain. It's either like a start a domain or end of a domain, right? So, so it's a, really a finite state. So it's a well-defined hard state. However, we cannot see these, those states directly from the data, from the heat map, right? So that's why we want to infer those states from the interactions we, we get from the experiments. So that's why uh, in this case, the hidden mark model can be very helpful. Uh, so the, the, the input for this like hidden mark, mark model is people can define the this like directionality index to qualify the bias of each location. So the way to compute this index is uh, like this. So for each location, we just count like how many interactions are to the region that upstream of this location, right? And how many interactions to downstream of this location. Then you just check the difference. Yeah. So if we see more interactions to the upstream of a location, then probably like it's still in the domain right? because it's like if we if we move the triangle, like it's still as in, in the domain. So we see a lot of interactions for the region to the upstream. Uh, when when it hits the boundary, then somehow this index will become balanced, right? So you can see in the middle case, if we if you just summarize like how many interactions to the upstream, how many interactions to downstream, then uh, maybe at some point it become a very small value. So, so now you know that it's uh, the, the boundary. Then after it hit the boundary, then, then when it moves to another domain region, the index will change, right? So now you will see more and more interactions coming to the downstream of the, of the location you are checking rather than the upstream. Uh, then you know you are entering the second uh, domain region. Yeah. So, so this is the idea. So, uh, of course, because all those like heat map is uh, from the experiment, it's very noisy. The same as the uh, this index we are computing, it's also very noisy, right? So that's why we want to like uh, define some states. So we hope to infer those states from those like noisy data. Uh, then what are states? So, so in, in this model, you can see uh, uh, we can actually define like a three different states. One is like a, is to the upstream. The other states is is a downstream bias, right? And the third case like is at the boundary. So we either is at the boundary or in the very middle of the domain. So we don't know where where it goes. Right? So, so that's why you can see like this this figure showing the result like. Uh, if we compute the index, we can see like sometimes it's positive and then become negative and positive, negative and positive, negative. Then we can map those index back to the domain, uh, back to the states, back to the three states we define. Then you can see in the hidden states, the hidden mark model, the hidden states, we have like either in state one or state two. Then by using the state one or state two, we can define what's the boundary of each domain out of the heat map, yeah. So uh, then uh, if we go further to the heat map, then again, we will hit to this like enhancer, uh, enhancer promoter loops. So in one example, like a really real uh, high resolution data, tell us that there are more than 10,000 uh, loops they can find in the whole heat, uh, whole like uh, genome, across the whole genome. And on average, like this interaction will cross several hundreds of base pairs. And uh, uh, when people try to like check those loops uh, in different cell lines, then uh, you can see actually there are very different patterns for different cell lines. So for example, for this GM cell line, uh, if we focus on very small region, you can see for this, like, this chunk of the region, there's only one interaction, one loop. In the whole region, right? However, in a lot of cell line, so if we check the DNA, they uh, maybe have some different, but roughly they are similar. If we if we check the loops, you can see their looping patterns are very different compared to the first case. So indicating that those loops, those enhanced promoter loops, 
is very like a cell type specific things. Just like the global path is very, is also cell type specific. Uh, and again, uh, based on like what people have been known about the like genome structure, uh, people also try to check whether those loops are associated with those CTCF binding domains. So CTCF is a protein that can bind to the DNA. It works like a, 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 like a roadblock. If it's bind there, then uh, other people, uh, other protein cannot move around, can, can read, uh, cannot read the DNA is nearby it. So, so you can see uh, if we check the, uh, the association between the CTCF and the loop, you can see like here is a peak, right? There is a loop. And we also see a peak in the CTCF. Again, like in the other cell line, we can see many peaks in the CTF, and then we see any loops. So of course, you can see the, the mapping is not very like one-to-one. -one. It's not really one-to-one, -one, but we can see some association. And that's why like later, people try to uh, somehow try to mod do some models, like whether this like CTCF binding can determine the looping of the DNA. So I, I will show more example later, but uh, like this is the idea. Like people have the data, then we can have some like hypothesis like why the DNA form those loops. Uh, since since um, I, I've shown you like it's uh, very important to see the heat map at the different resolution. So people already like uh, uh, give very good like software, so you can easily see the heat map uh, on different resolution. Like for the very low resolution, it's like you want to see the interaction on the whole genome, like, right? So this, each block is one chromosome. So you want to see the interaction on the whole genome. Uh, compared to like a Google map, it's like you want just to see the world map, right? So it's a very high level uh, presentation on the picture on the world map. Uh, if we want, uh, if we go down, uh, if you uh, if you zoom in, then probably you can see like the, what's the pattern, what the heat map look like for each chromosome, uh, right? So now probably it's like uh, you have a map for, for one country or one state, something like this. Then you can go further. Then uh, probably you can see those like triangles patterns, right? So really a different domain region. Then probably different domain. Each domain somehow define like a city, uh, a city map. Uh, in, in the Google in the Google map, uh, you can uh, you can zoom in and move around. Then at the very lowest uh, lowest level, you can see the enhancer and the promoter loops. Right? So so now it's really you you have a map about like each building, like maybe two building are close to each other in the, uh, in the city or in city block and so on. So that's why uh, if you are interested to see the data like uh, what this like three D genome uh, the genome structure looks like. Uh, you can like install this like software, then you can zoom in and zoom out to see the interaction of different resolutions. Uh, so this is one software. Uh, a lot of software is called uh, uh, high glass. It's uh, like have similar functions. Mm -hmm. 